Hi, I'm Cody with Biodome, uh, here to explain different types of hydroponic systems. First, we'll look at what hydroponics is basically. Hydroponics is, is the act of growing plants on water with nutrients, so there's really no soil involved. Um, usually when you add nutrients to water, it's called nutrient solution. This is common for in the industry and I'll be using it in the video. Yeah, so in hydroponics, we can't just grow solely on water. Plants need some type of structure to hold them in place and at least suspend the roots into the water. So typically we use something called substrates. Uh, substrates are usually some type of uh, natural or fibrous material to help hold the plants up. Uh, one of the main ones we use and is commonly used in the industry is called rock wool. What rock wool is essentially is, is a spun up uh, like cotton candy like structure of, of rocks made into these little structures that can hold water, nutrients, and have little holes for the seeds, as well as allowing the uh, plant to grow through them and uh, have the roots grow through the bottoms. So in hydroponics, we use water-soluble uh, nutrient solutions. Basically what these are are nutrients that you can add into water and they mix properly to allow for the water to become a nutrient solution. Uh, typically we use either something like this, which is a three-part uh, liquid nutrient solution, or you use some kind of water-soluble powder or pellet solution. And all these do is they just dissolve in the water and they, and they allow for the plants to absorb the nutrients from the water. So deep water culture is one of the more basic forms of hydroponics. Essentially, you just take the plants and you suspend them over top of a relatively deep tank of nutrient-filled water. Um, and you either circulate the water with air using an air pump, or you can provide a slight air gap above the plants in the water just so the roots can get a proper amount of aeration. As you can see, the roots just grow out and they dangle for out from underneath the growing medium into the nutrient-filled water. Um, in this instance, we have a slight air gap to allow for proper air, but you still need a certain amount of circulation in the water just so it doesn't start growing any algae. So the next method of hydroponics is called ebb and flow, or flood and drain. Essentially, instead of keeping the plant suspended in the water constantly, you flood the system periodically and then drain it to an external reservoir. Um, this has a distinct advantage of providing proper, air, proper aeration to the plants and allowing the roots to dry out, which helps protect them against various root-borne illnesses. Uh, however, you do need a reliable timer and it does take some getting used to uh, having to pump the, the water all the way into the tank and drain it all out, requiring an entirely separate reservoir. So the next type of hydroponics is called NFT, or nutrient film technique. Essentially what it is, is you, uh, you suspend the plants over top of some kind of tubing or something like this, and you run a constant stream of nutrient filled water over top of it like so. Um, usually this is only used for uh, herbs or other leafy greens as it's very effective for that, but can be ineffective again for larger plants, especially with those with the larger root systems. Uh, this has the distinct advantage of having a constant running cycle of nutrient-filled water and makes sure the water stays very, very clean and uh, ready to use. Uh, the one downside is you need a reliable pump, as if the pump die it shuts off, then it causes the plants to die very quickly. So the cracky method of hydroponics is really referred to as a passive method, requiring very little input or any uh, work after you set it up. Essentially, we take some kind of container uh, like this or jars or small pots, and you fill it with all the water and nutrients that the plant is gonna need for its entire life. And gradually, as the plant grows and the water gets used or evaporates, it slowly starts to create an air gap between uh, the roots and it, eventually, once the roots hit the bottom and the water runs out, that's usually when the plant's ready to harvest. Most people use this for microgreens or even unintentionally use it for microgreens because they don't realize that it's one, it's one method. Uh, this is one of the most common methods to be used at home. It can be done without very little effort. All it requires is some very simple calculations and some water-soluble nutrient solution. You can fill up a container with uh, pebbles or, or small rocks, fill it up with water, and then just put your plant on, and as it grows, it, it'll the water level will gradually decrease and you'll watch the roots follow the water. This allows for proper aeration and a good nutrient, nutrients for your plants. So the final form of hydroponics we're going to talk about is called uh, drip hydroponics. Uh, essentially what you do is you just place the plant inside of some sort of substrate 
and you just drip a nutrient-filled water on top of it using less than maybe about one gallon per hour drip emitters. Um, this is most similar to normal forms of uh, growing because you do have a very traditional looking uh, soil and water setup and plant setup, but we use soil that has nothing. It's called coca coir. Uh, you can also use pebbles uh, or, or clay pebbles as well. It has no nutrient density, no fertilizer in it, so only the water carries the nutrients. This, is, this method is most suitable for uh, larger plants, but it can be used for plants of all sizes, and it's a very common industry. So this is a, a brief overview of the, uh, the most common methods of hydroponics. Uh, hopefully this helps you decide what type of hydroponics that you would like to do.